I'm going to tell you sometimes in life, you trying to hold on too tightly to some things, that anger you don't want to let go of, that depression you want to hold on to, that bitterness will take you out. You're never going to be able to receive your peace until you let go of some things. We got it up there, I'm sure, but the Bible says, and when the Sabbath day was come, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many hearing him were astonished, saying, from whence hath this man these things? And what wisdom is this which is given unto him, that even such mighty works are wrought by his hands? They say, what's going on? What are we seeing? What are we seeing? And they began to say, is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary, the brother of James and Joseph and Judah and Simon? And are not his sisters here with us? And they were offended with him, the Bible said. But Jesus said unto them, a prophet is not without honor. A prophet going to be honored. But in his own country and among his own kin and among his own house. He don't find no honor. And he could, and the Bible says in verse five, and it says, and he could there do no mighty work. His spirit couldn't move because they refused to honor. And they said he couldn't do no mighty work save that he laid his hand upon a few sick folk and healed them. And he marveled because of their unbelief. He was like, what is happening? And he went around about the villages teaching, amen? Lord, we thank you for your word because there's so many jewels hidden in your word, Father God. Let us search your word as if we're looking for treasure, Father God. Let us not pass anything up and open up your word. Open up our ears to hear, Father God, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So we see in the scripture, y'all, last time we talked about how sometimes we can get so focused on man that we miss God, right? Sometimes we got to be careful because we can get so focused on what's going on on earth that we miss what's going on in heaven. Amen. Amen. And so these men in the scripture, they begin to see Jesus manifest the glory of God. They see Jesus operating in wisdom and power. And the Bible says they were astonished. And instead of glorifying God, they, be, they begin to focus on his humanity yeah. and an opportunity to overlook his divinity. And we got to be careful of that because our feet follow the direction of our focus. Amen. We got to be very careful about that because right after the Bible says they were offended. Yeah. You know, when you get too focused on men and you stop focusing on God, you're going to find yourself offended with people. So you got to be very, very, very protective of your focus because, again, your feet follow the path of your focus. And so tonight we're going to pick up right there where the Bible says they were offended. Now, I started to talk about the spirit of offense, but I decided to change my, change my mind a little bit. The spirit moved me, y'all, instead of going in that direction. Because, again, our feet follow the path of our focus. So I say I'm not. We're not going to talk about the spirit of offense tonight. We're going to switch it up, and we're going to talk about the spirit of love. Amen. Because the Bible says, whatsoever is holy, whatsoever is pure, whatsoever is lovely, whatsoever is good, focus on these things. Amen. Because you're going to know the truth, and the truth is going to set you free. Our pastor taught us if you want to figure out a counterfeit, you don't need to study the counterfeit. You, you study the real, and the counterfeit is going to expose themselves. So we're going to focus on the truth, and the lies are going to expose themselves tonight. Amen. Amen. We're going to focus on identifying. Love, because we want to identify the voice, the character, and the nature of love. Amen? Because when, 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 when it's, it's hard to stay in bounds when you can't identify the boundaries. You ever play basketball in the hood and it ain't no lines on the ground? And so when you can't identify the boundaries, you're going to often find yourself arguing whether we out of bounds or not. Amen? But when the lines are clear, it's easier to operate in the boundaries. And we never want to find ourselves operating outside of the boundaries of love. Amen. We always want to operate within love, amen? Yes. amen? And the Bible tells us, in line with what we talked about on honor, the Bible tells us 
that love does not dishonor. If we look at 1 Corinthians 13, verses 4 through 5, the Bible tells us love does not dishonor. That's right. So if you find yourself walking in dishonor, you're not operating in love. Amen? You're operating outside of the boundaries because love don't manifest itself like that. Somebody look at your neighbor and say, love don't act like that. Love don't act like that. Hey, God, I don't know what that is, but that ain't love. <laughs> Amen. Because the Bible says that God is love. Amen. Y'all know that? The Bible says God is love and love yes. is of God. Yes, yes. And so if you want to know the definition of love, you have to look at the character of God. Because his character is the definition That's of it. love. Love and God are one. They're one, y'all. Anytime you've heard the voice of love, then you've heard the voice of God. It's impossible to know love if you don't know God. That's it. That's it. You, can say, you can say you do, but you don't. Amen? If you don't know God, then you don't know love because they are one. When you've heard the voice of love, then you've heard the voice of God. Yes. Yes. Understand what I'm saying? Y'all catching me? Yes. You've heard the voice of God. The Bible says, upon these two things hang all the law. He said, when you love your brother as yourself and you love God with all your heart, upon these two things hang all the commandments. That's it. The Bible even says, he that walketh in love fulfilleth the law. That's right. God. So the law is, the, the law is actually ex an expression of his love. And I want to tell you, because God is love, everything was designed by love. And for love. And through love. And the secret to everything is love, y'all. I'm going to tell you, the secret to sales is love. The secret to relationships is love. I hear, I hear B out there, the secret to worship is love. The secret to relationship is all love. So everything is based on love. And so if we're not able to identify love, y'all, we're missing everything. When you can't identify love, you're missing everything that you ought to catch. And when you don't know the truth, it makes you susceptible to lies. That's real. Amen. To be honest with you. That's and if you don't know love, it's going to make you, you're going to be easily misled by other things. So we got to be able to identify, y'all. So tonight, I got a little chart, y'all. And this helped me, some of my friends and my family, y'all. This little chart that we use to understand when we operate in outside of the boundaries of love, or outside of the boundaries of light, amen? So I, I brought this little chart, and we're going to pull it up as soon as they get it up there, because I want y'all to see it. Sound booth coming with it in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Sound booth coming with it. You got to speak. <laughs> yeah. It's coming. It's coming. I'm going to wait on it. I'm going to wait on the Lord in Jesus' name. That's love, ain't love. And it's not always Brent back there, y'all. It's saying it'd be some other people too. Amen. I might have to speak it. Hey, Lord, in Jesus' name. So listen, I want to introduce y'all to a chart. There it is. Hey! Give the Lord some praise, amen. And so I want to introduce y'all to this, this. It's called the chart of light and darkness. And we use this, and it's beneficial, y'all. And this, I want to introduce you to the house of light right here, okay. all right? And all of these in this house are spirits. In this house, we see the spirit of wisdom. In this house, we see the spirit of peace, the spirit of love, the spirit of humility, the spirit of honor. And all of these dwell together in unity as a family. And y'all feel free to take a picture of it, because when you're going through stuff, you have to refer back to it, all right? All right, and so all of these dwell together in unity. And all of these lead to life. Peace leads to life. Love, joy, grace, faith, hope, these all lead back to life. And these all dwell together in unity. But I also want to introduce you to the house of darkness as well. Yeegah. And so in this house, we find the spirit of anger, the spirit of fear, the spirit of depression. And all of these spirits dwell together in harmony. All right? But all of these spirits lead to death, all right? That anger leads to death. Division leads to death. Dishonor leads to death. Amen? Amen. And so we have to be careful of which one of these houses we operate out of. Right. We got to ask ourselves, which house am I operating out of tonight? 
Amen? And so just like there's unclean animals and clean animals, I want to tell you there's also unclean spirits. Yes. Understand some things that are not meant to be operated in. And so God has given us a choice to choose between light and darkness. You have a choice, y'all. The Bible tells us in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 19 through 21, it says, Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, having this seal, that the Lord knows them that are his. And so let everyone that names the name of Christ depart from iniquity, yes. uncleanness, yes. darkness. He says, let everyone that name the name of Christ depart from iniquity. Yes. Because in every great house, there's not only vessels of gold and silver, yes. but there's also vessels of wood and earth. Some things are made for honor and some things are made unto dishonor. Remember, Pastor taught on this a while back, too. He said, you got your fine china for your, for your honorable guests, but then you got the plastic plates for the less honorable guests. Amen. <laughs> and so some things are made for honor and some things unto dishonor. But the Bible says, if a man therefore purge himself of these, he shall be a clean vessel unto honor, yeah. sanctified and meet for the Father's use and prepared for every good work. The Bible says if a man purge himself of these, what does he mean? He's talking about that iniquity. Yes. If a man purge himself from iniquity, these unclean spirits in that house of darkness. Can we get that house of darkness one more time? If a man, if, listen, if you would purge yourself of that spirit of anger, if you would purge yourself for that spirit of gossip, that spirit of division, God could use you for his purpose more effectively when we purge ourselves of these things, the Bible said. That spirit of depression. He's waiting for you to get rid of that thing. Let that thing go so he can use you to your max capacity. See, life is like a movie, but you get to choose your role. But I'm going to tell you, not every role is expedient. The bad guy dies in the end. Yeah. You get to choose. And I'm going to tell you, in between light and darkness, these two don't mix. Mm -hmm. No. We look at Genesis chapter 1, verse 4. It says that God saw that the light was good. And guess what he did? The Bible says he divided light from darkness. So just like what God put together, no man can separate. Mm -hmm. What God separates no man could put back together. You understand? Paul said, what has light to do with darkness? And if you believe the scripture, you know that the presence of one is the absence of the other. Can we get both of them up there at the same time? Oh, Lord, I hope I ain't asking for them too hard. Glory, 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 glory. All right, and so anywhere, anywhere you see light, you're not going to see darkness because they can't occupy the same space. they like crips and blood. They don't share space. they like, they like oil and water. They don't share the same space. Amen? And so anywhere you see love, you're going to see the absence of hate. Anywhere you see humility, you're going to see the absence of pride because both of these spirits can't occupy the same action. Either you're motivated by pride or you're motivated by humility, and you got to ask yourself, which house am I operating out of? What house am I operating out of? Because where you see truth, lies have to go. In the name of Jesus. You understand? Anywhere you see the spirit of unity, the spirit of division can't be there. All right? And you could fake like you got an obedient spirit, but that rebellious spirit over time is going to manifest itself. You could pretend to be wise. But underneath that spirit of foolishness is going to catch up with you. Yes, yes. Woo! Any way you see light, darkness cannot be. So you got to ask yourself the question, what house am I operating out of? And what am I talking about when I say light? What is this light that I'm talking about? Amen? Because I'm talking about that light, that same light that John talked about when he said he was the true light and in him was life. And this light was life. And this light lighteth every man that comes into the world. And, and John calls him the true light. 
All right, so, so this light we're talking about ain't sunlight, okay? Because we understand this, the sun was created on the fourth day of creation. But this light that I'm talking about was created from the beginning. When God said, let there be light, the Bible says there was light. And the darkness couldn't comprehend it. This is, a, this is that true light. The sunlight is just a picture, an yes. echo, yes. a shadow of yes. the true light. But what, what is this true light that I'm talking about? Amen? Glory. What is this true light that I'm talking about? I'm talking about, let me get that picture one more time. Because this is the light. I want to show you. I'm a practical. I like to see it. And so the light that I'm talking about is the peace and the wisdom and the joy that comes from the Holy Ghost. Yes. Yes. Catch what I'm saying here. I don't want you to miss it, all right? I don't want you to miss it. In Romans 14, verses 7, 17 through 18, the Bible tells us, it says, For the kingdom of God is not about meat and drink. And all of these physical things. But what is it about? The Bible says, but it's, a, it's about righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Yes. We got it up there? Amen. Yes. So he's telling you, it's not your peace. It's the peace that comes from the Holy Ghost. It's not your joy. It's the joy that comes from the Holy Ghost. This is life. And he's given us the ability to operate in his spirit, in his life. This is the true life. And this is the light that we want to operate in, y'all. This is the light that we got to find ourselves operating in. So I want us to keep this in mind as we talk tonight. Because when I say operating in love, I want y'all to know what I mean. I want y'all to have context of what I mean. All right, y'all keeping up with me? Yes. Glory. I kind of switched around my notes this time. But I want to, I want to share a story with y'all. Because I'm a story type of person. I like, I don't know if any of y'all listen to the music, but I like parables. I like metaphors. Yes. Probably too much. Y'all pray for me. They yes. Glory. But I like, I, this is just how I think. I think in parables. And so there was a story. It's not really a parable, but there was a story. And uh, it's based on a true story. Y'all can go look it up. I love this story. But it, I call it the parable of the sleeping, the sleeping pilot. And so it's a story of three men that's coming back from a vacation, and they're going on, they coming back from a vac vacation together, and one of the friends actually has his pilot's license, right? So he's, he's licensed to fly, and so he, co he convinces his friends to fly private instead of going through commercial, instead of going through customs. And so in lack of their better judgment, they agree, right? And so <laughs> as they get up into the sky, the pilot says, he says, He's starting to feel bad. He says, listen, this don't always happen, but sometimes when I get in the clouds, I get, a, I get really dizzy. But if, <laughs> right, right? But he said, listen, whatever happened, just don't freak out, all right? Just, just stay calm. They intend to shoot up. They're like, what? And sure enough, when he get into the clouds, he pass out. <laughs> and so the friend, one of the friends is getting ecstatic. He like, no, he didn't just pass out mid-flight. He began to shake the man. He said, wake up so I could kill you. What are you thinking? How you going to get us in a plane and pass out? Hey, Amen. And so he began to freak out, and he goes through a little bit of sorrow. He says, listen, man, we're going to die. The plane going to crash. Lord, why, why listen to this fool? But the other friend says, calm down. Listen, just stay calm. There's a radio. If you call on the radio, I'm sure there's some type of help that they design for people who fall into situations like this. Just stay calm. And so he grabs the radio and he says, we're going to die. We just need help. Listen, we, the, the pilot is dead. And we, it's like, Lord, calm down. Then there's a voice that comes over the radio and he says, he says, oh, um, you guys, if y'all trying to reach the radio tower, y'all on the wrong channel. Don't y'all know anything about radio etiquette? What's your coordinates? I'm going to need a little bit more than help. He grabbed the radio. He's like, what you mean? My pilot is dead. I told you we need help. I don't know nothing about no sky communication. And there's a lesson in there. I want to pinpoint right there. Because a lot of times all we know is that we need help yeah. from God. But we don't know how to communicate with heaven. And sometimes we could ask for things, y'all. We could ask for things. But the Bible says, because look, we ask for things, but we ask on the wrong channel sometimes. You could be asking for the right thing from the wrong place. The Bible says you ask and you have not because you ask amiss. 
You're asking it to consume it upon your lust. You're asking from the you're asking for a good thing, but sometimes we ask from the wrong place, y'all. Because I'm gonna tell you something about the spirit of love. The spirit of love is not moved by the spirit of greed. The spirit of love is not moved by the spirit of fear. Because it's not even you that's really asking it. It's a spirit of lust asking for that thing. Hey God. It's not even you asking for it. And so we ask for things and we don't get it because we asking from the wrong place. Amen? Amen? And so, getting back into the story a little bit, I just wanted to pinpoint and just point that out, but getting back into the story, uh, the man says, I'm going to stay in the area so I don't lose communication with you guys, and I'm going to get y'all connected to the radio tower. Amen? And so, when he gets him connected to the radio tower, the voice comes over the radio and he says, listen, I'm here today to make sure you guys get home safe to y'all family. But I need you to promise me one thing. I need you to promise me that you're going to trust my voice. That you're going to hold on to my every word like your life depends on it. Because so many people get in these situations and they succumb to the voice of their fears. Yes. And they don't make it. And listen, you may not be able to see me, but I can see exactly where you are, the voice says. Not only can I see where you are, but I can see where you're headed. And you're about to head into a serious storm. And in that storm, there's a mountain that I'm going to need to elevate you guys over. And if you don't trust my voice, you may not make it. Okay. All right? And I want to tell you that sometimes when you're in the storm, it's not the time to stop listening for the voice of God. I'm going to tell you. I'm telling you something I didn't been through, not something I heard. Amen. When you're going through radical situations, it may call for radical obedience. Yes. When you're in the wilderness, it's not the time to stop listening for the voice of God and start listening to all these other voices. Because if you listen to your depression, if you listen to your fears, you might not make it out. Come on. When you're in the lines, then that's when you really need to listen. Yes. Amen? Amen. Amen? And so the final part of the story. <laughs> and so... They made it through the storm, y'all. They made it through the storm. But as they came to the runway, they began to get closer and it began to get dark. And a voice comes over the radio and he says, listen, y'all coming close to the runway, but it's going to be so dark that you're not going to be able to see the pathway. It's going to be nearly impossible. But at the end of the runway, there's a cross and it's going to be lit up. And I need you to align the plane with the cross. I need you to focus on the light and align your vessel with the cross. And you can trust. It's going to be so dark you can't see the path, but you can trust. Once you align your vessel with that cross, trust that you're on the path. Amen. Amen. Just trust that you're on the path. And this is going to be glory. This, this is going to be hard because you've never landed a plane before. You're not going to get it on the first time. But praise God, you can just elevate and come back around. Okay? Don't try to get it on the first rip. All right? You just got to elevate and come back around. That's good. A righteous man falls seven times. There Amen? It. But it's about endurance. It. You don't have to win every fight. It's about enduring to the end. All right? And so he said, just elevate and come back around. And so the man tried a couple times. He didn't get it right. But around the seven or eight times, you understand? He started to get it. And the, the, vo the voice comes over the radio and he says, listen, when your wheels touch the ground this time, I need you to let go of the wheel. I need you to trust me and let go of the wheel because you're going to hold on too tightly and you're going to overcorrect and throw the plane off course. You're just going to have to trust gravity. Trust me. And so remember that this conversation is all in the headphones. You know, pilots, they fly with headphones because of the noise, right? And so the passenger can't hear. The instructions are personal sometimes. That's it. That's it. You understand? And so when... When he comes in for the landing, the man, the passenger on the side, like, boy, what is you doing? <laughs> Why is you letting go of the wheel? We almost home. Are you crazy? The plane is shaking. His fears are getting louder. And he has to quiet every voice that he's hearing and listen for the voice of the radio tower. And he begins to just let go. And they made it. And I'm going to tell you, sometimes in life, 
you trying to hold on too tightly to some things, that anger you don't want to let go of, that depression you want to hold on to, that bitterness, it's going to take you out. You're never going to be able to receive your peace until you let go of some things. Amen? I love that story, y'all. When I read it, I think I was crying when I read it. I was just, oh, this is, this is real, but this is so good. Yeah, because it's real, y'all. It spoke to me because a lot of times in life, man, there's a lot of voices and not just of people, situations. You know, God tells you one thing, but then your situation tells you you're not that. You look at your bank account and it don't agree with the word of God. You look at your situation and it don't agree either. You look at your friends and it don't agree, it don't agree either. God. But the question is, will you still agree? When nothing in your life agrees, are you still going to agree with the voice of God? Because Abraham, the Bible says, he believed against hope. He believed against all hope. He believed. He had a hope, y'all. Meaning he had an expectation. But there were some things coming against his expectation. But he still chose to believe God. And we gotta, we gotta learn the art of God said. Because if God said it, I believe it. And that's said it. Amen. That's the art of God said. When the, when, the, when the serpent tempted Jesus in the wilderness, he said, It is written. And we have to learn the art of standing on God's word. It's simple, but it's effective. Because when you resist the darkness, it has to flee. Yeah, y'all. When we stand on his word, though a thousand fall at our left and 10,000 at our right, his word won't be moved. His word won't never pass away. And so if we stand on that firm foundation, if we remain in that holy place, we won't never be moved no matter what storm comes. Because we we on a strong foundation. But we see... Hey, glory to God. But we see that these men in Scripture, these men in Scripture began to fight against their own foundation. They began to fight against their own foundation, and the Bible says that they were offended with Jesus. Not that they became offended, but that they were offended. You know, some people that just walk around with a nature of offense about themselves, they just, they just got a mindset of offense, and they're always offended by something. But I want to tell you that mindset of offense Unclean mindsets attract unclean spirits. It's true. It's true. So you gotta be you gotta be careful because the condition of your heart is important. I want y'all to hear me on that because that's gonna that's gonna help somebody, man. The condition of your heart is important. You know, if you keep a dirty house, you're gonna attract unclean creatures. Ants, roaches, rats. Yeah, but just like you keep your house dirty, you're going to attract certain creatures. If you keep your heart cluttered full of junk, you're going to attract unclean spirits. It's true. Yes, sir. If you sit around watching them scary movies all day, you're going to make a conducive environment for the spirit of fear. Yep. If you sit around watching that news all day, you're going to make a conducive environment for the spirit of anxiety. Yes, sir. Yeah, because they like certain environments. When Jesus told that parable about that spirit, that spirit had left because it got uncomfortable. The man got his heart together. And that spirit had to go. And he went through dry places seeking a place of rest. But he couldn't find no place of rest. And so he just returned. And he saw that the house was swept in in order, but it was empty. And so he took seven spirits more wicked than himself, the Bible says. And he went and did some redecorating. That's dangerous, y'all. So the condition of our heart is super, super important, y'all. And I want to tell you that the worst spirit is that spirit of offense. Because the spirit of offense will cause you to walk away from truth. Yes. The Bible says, when Jesus said, drink of my flesh and eat of my blood, the Bible says his disciples became offended and they no longer walked with him. Many of his disciples stopped walking with him at that point. And Jesus looked at his disciples, he said, y'all offended too? Come on, brother. Y'all offended too? Yeah. Because that spirit of offense is a dangerous thing. The Bible says a brother offended is harder to be one than a strong city. And the bars of their contention are like the bars of a castle. Yes. That spirit of offense is a dangerous thing. The Bible says in the last days, many shall be offended mm -hmm. and they shall betray one another and hate one another yes. and their love will wax cold. Yes. 
And when you don't have love, that spirit of offense just going to slip in. So you got to be careful, y'all. This is why they call Jesus the rock of offense. That word offense, it means to entrap or to ensnare or cause to stumble. It's that Greek word, scandalizo. I hope I'm saying that right. Scandalizo, that's it. It's to entrap. And if you ever find yourself easily offended, you, you entrap. You ever tried to reason with somebody that was offended with you? They can't receive. They can't receive. So you got to be careful of that spirit of offense because the Bible says those who love thy law won't be offended in anything. It's impossible that offense should come. It's going to come. But Jesus said, blessed are those who are not offended in me. So we see that we don't want to find ourselves too caught up in that spirit of offense. Amen? And the Bible says they were sent off into strong delusions because they didn't have a love for the truth. And every time love is absent, it leaves an open, vacant spot for that spirit of offense. Amen? And so these men, they began to look at Jesus through the lens of offense. And they saw him as an offense instead of a blessing, y'all. They assumed that he was offense, an offense instead of testing. The Bible tells us to test the spirit. Did y'all know that the Bible tells us to take a test? Yes. When you're dealing with people, yes. the Bible say test the spirit Amen. to see where it's from. Yes. It don't say test the person or the situation. It say test the spirit behind that person or that situation. And make sure where that thing is from, amen? And that word, that word, that word try that we see when it says try the spirit, it means to test or to examine, amen? <clears throat> but they didn't test, y'all. They didn't test. But the Bible starts off in, um, in 1 John 4, chapter 1, it says, Beloved, don't believe every spirit. Don't receive every spirit. Don't bring your life into alignment with a person or a situation until you know what spirit is behind that person or situation. I'm going to tell y'all, that's going to hear me on that one because that's going to save us some trouble, y'all. Before you go into that business deal, ask yourself, what's motivating this business deal? Is it a spirit of greed? Or am I being motivated by a spirit of wisdom? Because if it start off in darkness, it's going to end in darkness, yeah. The Bible said if the root be holy, the fruit is going to be holy as well. So you want to deal with some root issues. Before you go into that relationship, you want to ask yourself, is this motivated by a spirit of lust or is this motivated by a spirit of love? What's motivating me to make this decision? Before I make this business purchase, is this motivated by a spirit of envy or a hasty spirit? Am I being rushed into this thing? Or is this a spirit of patience and truth? Amen? You got to ask yourself because you can do the right thing from the wrong place and it still wind up messed up. Amen. Right. If you bring yourself into alignment with a lion spirit, you're going to receive the fruit of a lion spirit. Mm. So whatever you receive in life, the truth that you receive or the truth that you believe is the truth that you're going to receive. Amen. Amen? Amen. I'm going to say that one more time. The truth that you believe is the truth that you're going to receive. God is going to give you according to your expectations. Whatever you believe in life, that's what you're going to receive. Amen? Amen. If you partake in the, well, let me say it like this. The voice you follow is the voice that's going to lead you. I want to break it down so I make it clear. The voice that you follow is the voice that's going to lead you. But if that voice is darkness, that voice is, you're going to wind up in darkness. The Bible says the blind leadeth the blind, but they both wind up in the... So the blind lead the blind, but they both have one destination. They both have the same destination. If you partake in the labor, you're going to partake in the fruit as well. This is a biblical principle, y'all, but what's the scripture behind this? Matthew 10, 41. I want us to look at it. The Bible says, he that receiveth a prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward. And he that receive a righteous man in the name of a righteous man shall receive a righteous man's reward. So whatever you receive in life is what you're going to receive. Yes, and everything that come with it. Right? So you want to be very careful. And this is a good tool. This is why I'm teaching on honor. Because the prophet you receive, you're going to receive his reward as well if you partake in the labor. So when y'all see y'all passed up here, receive him with all your heart. Receive him for your own benefit. 
Amen. Amen. Hey, God, it's the anointing that you serve that you're going to receive. Amen. Amen. And a seed can only produce after its own kind. All right. So if you sow according to the flesh, you're going to reap according to the flesh. So you want to you want to be very careful what seeds you let take root in your heart. Because if the seed that's planted is darkness, remember the seed produces after its own kind. Yes, sir. Amen? Amen? And so if a seed of darkness is planted in you, if it starts in darkness, it's going to end in darkness unless the light intervenes. Amen? Amen? But the Bible says, test the spirit, y'all. Test the spirit. And that's where they made a mistake because they just assumed instead of testing. And sometimes we wind up fighting with people but we actually being attacked by spirits. Yes. Man, I'm being honest with you. I'm trying to, it's a, it's a tough subject, but I want to be honest with y'all. Yeah. A lot of times you're fighting with people, so starting up a boxing match ain't going to solve your problems. No. The Bible said we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, y'all. I love how Jesus did it because Jesus and his disciples operated by this principle. We see, we see where Jesus look at Peter, but he actually talking to Satan. Yes. <laughs> he said, Get thee behind me, Satan. He, he looked at Peter, but he talking to a spirit. Right, right. Hey, God, y'all don't miss it, y'all. Because a lot of time we fighting with fruit issues instead of root issues. Amen. That's right. I like how Paul did. The Bible says that Paul was walking along the way, him and his disciples, and they had a, a damsel uh, possessed with a spirit of divination, the Bible says. And she followed after people and used flattery to bring her slave owners money, all right? And she would follow them, and she would, she would say, here in the scripture, we see that she's following Paul and them, and she's saying, these men are the servants of the Most High God, which show unto us the way of salvation. In many days she did this, the Bible says. But Paul, being grieved, he turned and said to the Spirit, Come on, <laughs> I'm tired of dealing with you. Hey, but he's not dealing with the woman. Notice he's dealing with the spirit behind the woman. He's dealing with the root issue, y'all. Hey, God, I hope y'all hear me on this one. Because see, Eve, I bet she would have liked to know that snake that she was talking to had a spirit behind it. Yeah. And it's funny how sometimes darkness could try to manifest itself as light, y'all. Yes. The devil hopped in Peter and said, you're not going to die. The devil hopped in that stirrup and said, you ain't going to surely die. Uh, you see, you see, I want you to catch it now. Just like he hopped in this woman and said, these men are going to show us the way unto salvation. But P P Paul was able to discern spirits. He felt the spirit of grief try to attack him. He said, oh, look, come out of her. <laughs> I understand how to see what you're doing. And even though some things, y'all, they can look good, every good thing is not the right thing I have in my notes. I want y'all to catch that, y'all. Because she said some good things, but she said it from an unclean spirit. Correct. And you got to be careful because you can bring yourself into alignment with some things that are not of God, is what I'm telling you. And so we, we, don't, we don't respond to the situation, we respond to the spirit. And this is why the Bible tells us in Romans 12, verse 14, he says, bless them that persecute you. Yes. Ooh, he's giving us some deep wisdom. Bless those that persecute you and feed. When your enemy hungry, feed him. Yeah, he's giving us some deep spiritual prayer. When somebody come at you in the spirit of anger, don't return with the spirit of anger. You're just going to rile and feed that spirit. Yeah. He said, bless them that curse you. In so doing, you're going to rain coals of fire on their head. Because this is the principle. We don't overcome darkness with more darkness. Do you? you overcome darkness with light. I want y'all to catch it. You overcome darkness with light because a lot of people are broken due to a lack of love. And a lack of love is not going to fix them, y'all. It just, it just don't make sense like that. The Bible tells us in Romans 12, 21, he says, be not overcome with evil, but overcome evil with good. This is scripture. All right. I, I like to pull scripture so y'all don't know I'm just up here talking. Amen. Because a lot of times we let other people darkness overcome our light. Instead of letting the light of God overcome their darkness. Amen. We let people pull us off of our firm foundation. 
We let that one person in the, in the Popeye's drive-thru ruin our whole witness. They was like, come on, man. Are you saying that the darkness is stronger than the light or something? What's going on? A lot of times we let people cause us to operate outside of the boundaries of love, y'all. And the Bible tells us not only to test the spirit, don't believe every spirit, but it tells us to test and see if the spirit is of God. All right? So you want to see where that spirit from. You got to ask yourself, where is that spirit? The first thing you want to know if you're in a war when you meet a stranger is you want to ask them, where are you from? Who's your people? All right? Because you never want to come into agreement or take advice from your enemy, especially in tumultuous situations, especially when your life depends on it. Yes. Y'all remember the spirit of fear, what it said in the plane? Wake up so I can kill you. <laughs> remember what the spirit of fear said? We're going to die. You see how that spirit, it calls for death. Yes, it does. The pilot is dead. The pilot passed out, man. <laughs> but what does the spirit of hope say? Calm down. I'm sure there's somebody out there that can help us. Fear caused him to miss the whole radio. But the spirit of faith said, I'm sure somebody designed some sort of way to help people in this situation. Just call me. You see how the spirit of hope calls for life? These spirits, you can hear them. When you become, this is why the sermon of discerning of spirits is a gift to the church, right? Yes. The Bible calls that discerning of spirits, it's, it's a gift to a prophet, the overall body, all right? Yes. It's an important thing because if you can't discern spirits, you're going to find yourself listening to the wrong one. It's true. It's true. Amen? Amen? And I want to tell you, listen, the root most times is more important than the fruit. Yes, it is. Why you do what you do is more important than what you do sometimes, or where you do what you're doing from. Like we talked about earlier, you can ask for the right thing from the wrong place sometimes. Yes. And life is mostly about principles more than it is about action. Amen. Meaning Amen. David could show up to a knife fight with some rocks and still leave with the victory because the principles are the thing. Yes. God is the controller of the outcomes. He don't need your wisdom. He don't need your logic. When you stand on his principles, he going to make the, the world That's make it. sense. You could throw the dice, but he going to make them land. That's it. Amen. So life is about principles more than it is about action. And this is why the Bible says, even if you talk with the tongues of angels and you don't do it from a place of love, you're just making noise. I don't care if you give your body to be burned, the Bible says. But if you don't do it from love, you're wasting your time. It's, a, it's not about what you're doing. It's about where you're doing that from. Absolutely. They had two men that went to the temple, did the same exact thing, but only one of them went home justified. Because it's, it's, it's about root issues. And sometimes we find ourselves dealing, uh, dealing with fruit issues instead of root issues. We fighting with surface level things, yes. but the root issue is deeper. Am I making sense? You can pick every fruit off of a tree. They just going to grow back and you're going to be tired. You understand? You can deal with the headache. You can pop an aspirin, but if you don't deal with the root issue, you're just going to have another headache. You're going to have to keep buying aspirin. You understand? This might be a little bit bit diabolical, but if you want to destroy the Coca-Cola company, (laughs) you don't go into every store and break the bottle one by one. You're just going to be tired and in jail, all right? <laughs> if you want to destroy Coca-Cola, destroy the factory. Destroy the headquarters. Now, this is bad. You're still going to be in jail. <laughs> but the stores eventually going to run out. That's it. Deal with root issues, it. not fruit issues. You're just going to be wasting your time. What am I saying? Because I really want you all to catch this part. If you never change the root, you're never going to change the fruit. Amen. All right? Yeah. Right. So if you come to church and you're sowing, you're operating in a spirit of division. Don't be surprised when you go home and there's no unity because there's a root thing following you. Yeah. You got that spirit of anger and you can go to a new 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 company. You could get a new job, but that spirit of anger going to go with you. Yeah. You got that spirit of lust. You think you're just going to hop into a marriage and that spirit going to go. You need to deal with the spirit. (laughs) You understand? That's still a spirit. You're taking an old problem into a new situation and you can't figure out what's going wrong in life. 
This is going to help us if you really pay attention to me. Listen, snap a picture of that chart because you really got to ask yourself, what spirit am I operating in? What spirit is motivating what I'm doing, y'all? Because sometimes the fiery darts of the enemy are physical, but your enemy is actually spiritual. Yes. The Bible says we don't wrestle against flesh and blood in Ephesians 6, 2. I wish we I hope we could pull it up. Yeah. The Bible said we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against what? Against rulers of darkness and against spiritual wickedness. So the wickedness we fight in is spiritual, y'all. Yeah. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 10 through 5, I'm trying to rush through it. He says, we don't walk after the flesh. We don't war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. But strongholds where? It says to the casting down of imaginations. What are the imaginations in our, in our, in our, in our, in our heart, y'all? You understand? It says to the casting down of imaginations and the casting down of every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge. Oh, we still in the heart. We still in the heart because I want you to understand that these spirits are fighting for the territory of your heart. The Bible says that Noah's generation was destroyed because their imagination was continually wicked. Yes. He had to, darkness captured the imagination of man, but this word, this light, the entrance of his word bringeth light. This light right here is mighty to the pulling down of strongholds, amen? Where? In our imagination. What does it say? What does it say? To the pulling down of strongholds and anything that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought yes. to the obedience of Christ. Yes. I want y'all to notice there's a war going on for your heart. Amen. There's a war going on for y'all imagination. Yes. And I want us to win Amen. because not every thought that comes into your heart is from God. No, it's, not. it's not. And if you believe it is, you're going to find yourself in some trouble. Yes. Hey, God, the Bible says, as a man thinketh, so is he. As a man thinketh, y'all. But I want to ask you, we wrap it up, we're getting close to the end. Which house is leading you? Which house are you operating from? Because no man can serve two masters. You're going to love one and you're going to hate the other. Because these two ain't friends, amen? And I'm going to ask you, me and Brother Jerry was talking about this. I'm going to ask you, where art thou, Adam? Where are you? Can you discern where you are? Are you in the house of light or are you in the house of darkness? Because I'm going to tell you, sin is waiting at the door of your heart to have mastery over you. I'm telling you something serious right now. They're fighting for the territory of your heart. And I want to give you a caveat. When, when you give foothold to one of them, they all, they come in as a group. They dwell together. I want to tell you, these spirits are a family, and they dwell together, y'all. So as soon as you let pride in, pride is going to invite gossip. That spirit of gossip coming too. Once gossip get in, that spirit of division coming right after. Yeah, and after you let the spirit of division in, the spirit of anger will like, well, it's a party. <laughs> and once they all get in there, they're going to be like, for we are many. We are legion up in this thing. You better be careful. Because if you entertain one, whoo, James 3.16 says, for where envying and strife is, there is confusion in every evil work. You let one in, they come in. They come in. The Bible says in Proverbs 11.2, two, two, yeah, 11, it says, when pride cometh, then cometh shame too. But with the lowly is wisdom. So when you become humble, not only the wicked spirits dwell together, but the spirits of light dwell together too. And when you humble yourself, wisdom is like, okay. <laughs> Unity is like, okay. Yes, Love is like, okay. <laughs> well, it's a party, amen. <laughs> and I want to tell you, when love is coming to your heart in its fullness, it begins to cast out darkness. The Bible says, when you made perfect in love, perfect love casts out all fear. Yes, it does. They begin to start putting people out, but Jesus is the only one that's meant to reign in the territory of our heart. 
So you got to let that morning star rise up in your heart and to push out that darkness. Amen. Because we call to be children of light. The Bible says in First Thessalonians uh, 5, 5, it says, ye are the children of light and the children of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. y'all. Yeah. God is telling you his will right here. Yes. He's saying that I made you to be children of light, not to operate in darkness. Yeah. And when you want to get rid of darkness, you have to resist the darkness and make your home in the light. Yeah. Amen. And I believe this year, y'all, yeah. we're going to get rid of darkness in our finances. Yeah. Pastor preaching, he bringing the light. And the entrance of the word bringeth forth light, the Bible says. Yes. And so we're about to get rid of darkness in our finances. Amen. We're about to get rid of darkness in our marriages. Amen. We're about to get rid of darkness in our ministries, in our purpose. Amen. Hey, God. And how are we going to get rid of this darkness? And I'm going to call the band up. I don't know where they are. They fall off. Hey, Lord. Hey, Lord. <laughs> Coffee is for any time, huh? Hey, Lord. <laughs> Glory. Amen. And so how do you get rid of the darkness? By operating in the light. Yes. Because these two can't dwell together. If you want to know how to get rid of darkness, stay in the light. Amen. Stay in the holy place. Don't be moved off your firm foundation. Thank you, Jesus. Anytime you find yourself operating outside of these boundaries, Catch yourself. Like, ooh, whoa, whoa, what spirit was that? Because I know they don't roll alone. They roll together. If I let that one in, 50 other ones going to come. And the Bible says the, the latter state of that man was worse than the former state of that man. Woo! Glory. Is this helping anybody, y'all? Glory. Glory. Because the Bible calls us to be rooted and grounded in love so that we can comprehend with all the saints, the breadth, the length, the depth, and the height, that we may know the love of Christ which passes knowledge. It's not even a, a mental thing. It's a life thing. It's a life thing, y'all. He's going to reveal some things to you in this house. Because you know truth and wisdom dwell here, too. Yeah, the spirit of understanding dwells here. I wish I could. Boy, there's so much I want to talk about, but we're going to end it. We're going to end it because really, y'all, tonight, I want to emphasize that it don't matter what you do. It matters more where you do it from. What spirit are you doing it from? I really want y'all to, to get that. Because even Jacob, he was a trickster to him, but he loved the Lord. Yes. He loved the Lord with all his heart, and he did... One just loved food. <laughs> but he did what he had to do to get closer to the Lord. And the Lord cares more about what spirit is leading you to do what you do. What house are you operating from? You can decide the root, but your root is going to determine the fruit. Yes. Amen? Amen? Somebody may be surrounded in darkness tonight, dark situations. You may be fighting with voices that you think are yours, and they're not. Amen? But I want to tell you tonight to choose life. Choose light. If you're tired of fighting with anxiety, if you're tired of fighting with depression, yeah. all you have to do is make a choice. If you're tired of being confused, scared, and blind, yes, all you have to do is make a choice. The Bible says his burden the burden that he wants you to bear is right here. These are the things he wants you to pick up and carry. He wants, his burden is light. Yes. And when you look at that, the Bible actually says light. Yes. Yes. It's not, I'm not just making stuff up up here. I like to pull the scripture, y'all. <laughs> his burden is light, y'all. God speaking metaphors. <laughs> hey, Lord. And so, Lord, we're just going to pray tonight. If anybody want to they don't know the light or they're not living in the light and they want to be transferred into the kingdom of light out of the kingdom of darkness it's simple as just asking and you could pray with me tonight if you want to be translated into the kingdom of light tonight it's easy as abc our pastor teaches this all you have to do is admit that you're a sinner all you have to do is believe that he died and rose 
All you have to do is confess him as your Lord and Savior, and you shall be saved, the Bible says. So tonight we're going to pray. Say, Lord, I thank you for saving me out of darkness and bringing me into your marvelous light. God, fill my heart with your light. God, I resist the darkness. God, I receive your light tonight. God, make me a child of light tonight. Take away the depression. Take away the fears, Father. And make me perfect in your love. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Glory. Y'all have a safe trip home. I love y'all and be safe. Amen. Glory. Glory.